Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to another video of my channel. I am Kishaloy. Hope you all are doing well. So in this video, I am going to discuss that what are the documents that you need to submit or you need to prepare if you are looking for applying PhD in foreign universities. So if you are someone who is planning to apply for PhD in foreign universities, then say there are some documents that, that you need to prepare. And it's not only about your CV or you know your bio data. Uh, so there are some other documents, supporting documents, which plays a very crucial role uh, whenever your application will be verified by by that institution and these documents actually will show you that how good a candidate you are for the phd position and how how you know credible you are your credibility actually uh, these documents will show you so that's why these documents you need to prepare very well so that you know you will have a edge uh, in in the in the application so in this video i'm going to discuss all of that that document in detail and give you some tips so that you know you can prepare those documents very well and that will help you to get admission in different foreign universities so this is all about this video the content of this video so please do watch the video till end and if you are new to this particular channel please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get all the notifications regularly without further ado let's get started into today's video the first and obvious document that you need to prepare is your cv or biodata uh, so you have to make a short but strong cv uh, to portray your academic details uh, so that you know whenever someone will review your documents or review your application uh, from your cv they will get a rough idea about your academic details academic you know qualifications and academic achievements now how your cv should look like so first of all the cv the length of the cv should be maximum two pages otherwise it will be too lengthy you know then you know for the reviewer it will be difficult to review the whole cv now what are the things that should be there in the cv so first of all your your academic details should be there in the cv so you have to mention from where you have done your btech from where you have done your mtech so no need to mention about class 10th and 12th because it is it is an application for phd that's why your btech and mtech details uh, is sufficient in the cv so in the top of the cv the, these academic details should be there then you know when you are giving the academic details uh, please uh, you know mention your cgpa also because cgpa plays a very crucial role on portraying how good a candidate you are so if your cgpa is good then it says that you are a good candidate and if you and and and, and, and otherwise so that's why you know don't forget to mention the cgpa and you know what is the scale uh, within which it is it is measured like it is out of 10 or out of 8 so that also you mention and also mention the supervisor name under whom you have done your btech project or uh, mtech project and if they have any web page so then the link also you can give in the that pdf cd cv pdf next give the different project uh, that you have done in your btech or mtech uh, so write a brief about that project and uh, if there is some github repo uh, where the code for that particular project is there so also mention uh, you know give the link of that particular github repo uh, in the in the cv and also you know mention the relevant courses that you have taken so whenever you are applying for a phd position uh, so you will be applying for some domain like for data science domain or system domain or theory domain so don't forget to mention the relevant courses that you have done uh, corresponding to that particular domain so suppose you are applying for data science what are the data science related courses that you have taken like machine learning linear algebra probability whatever courses that you have done in your bachelor's or master's so please write about it because that is very crucial uh, because whenever someone will review your document for a particular domain you or see will, will will be looking for uh, some some courses on that particular domain that you have done and also you know if possible you know i mean i mean they will go to the your transcript that is another document that you have to submit and check how much score you have done on on those on those courses so that's why you know uh, please mention about the courses that you have taken and finally you know if if you have done any project and uh, if you've done any paperwork i mean if you publish any paper uh, during your masters or btech uh, which is relevant to this particular domain like suppose you are you are applying for data science and then data science related papers whichever you have published give the reference of that paper in in, in your cv and also you know give the link uh, of that particular paper and if there is again if there is any um, github repo where your code is there uh, don't forget to mention that also in the cv so all of these things you need to you need to mention in your cv to make it a strong but yeah all, all always give a brief uh, detail of each of these so that your cv doesn't go beyond beyond two pages so this is the first thing that you have to make that is your cv so the next document that you need to submit is your transcript so for your btech uh, for eight semesters whatever you have done for that and for mtech uh, whatever four semester that you have done so for all of this semester you need to submit uh, 
टू टू ट्रांसक्रिप्ट वन फॉर बी टेक एंड वन फॉर एम टेक सो हेयर जस्ट आई आई वॉन्ट टू मैंसन वन थिंग दैट ट्रांसक्रिप्ट इज नॉट द ग्रेट कार्ड और मार्क्सिप दैट यू यू इज टू गेट आफ्टर ईच सेमिस्टर फ्रॉम योर कॉलेज सो ट्रांसक्रिप्ट इज समथिंग दैट योर यूनिवर्सिटी विल प्रोवाइड यू इट्स अ कॉन्सोलिटेड ग्रेट कार्ड काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स वेयर दे विल गिव वन सिंगल डॉक्यूमेंट्स वेयर एवरी सेमिस्टर्स मार्क्स विल भी मैंसन सो दिस यू हैव टू कलेक्ट फ्रॉम योर यूनिवर्सिटी हुई चार यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डन योर एम टेक और बी टेक सो दैट यू नीड टू सबमिट ड्यूरिंग योर पी एच डी एप्लीकेशन इन द फॉर यूनिवर्सिटीज नेक्स्ट इज स्टेट of purpose or sop uh, so this document is very critical i hope you you have heard about this document many times that whenever you have to apply for any phd or even for ms also if you are applying for foreign foreign universities then you have to write a sop letter now what is this sop so this is not clear to many people even when i was applying for uh, for my phd in foreign universities for me also it was new because this is a very uh, complex kind of things and people used to have a kind of confusion that you know what i should write in sop now sop as it says that statement of purpose letter so here you have to state uh, what is the purpose of your phd application so why you are you know applying for phd and why in this particular institution you are choosing that you have to mention in 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 this uh, in this document so you have to start writing your academic background a brief in the in the, in the first uh, couple of para and then you have to mention what is your motivation of doing phd and finally you have to mention that what is your area of interest and why you are choosing in this particular institution and which are the professors you are looking for you know working uh, in your phd so everything you have to write in write in detail so that you know the reviewer will have a idea that okay this was the motivation that's why you are applying to this institution uh, so it's not a kind of you know kind Kind of just out of uh, nowhere you have applied for this institution there is a strong motivation behind it and there are some strong matches uh, with your area of interest to different professor who is working in that institution so everything you have to write in this document so that you know uh, you can you can properly state the purpose of your phd application and why you are applying for this particular institution next document that you need to submit is the research proposal uh, so research proposal is something it's a letter where you have to propose that what are the what are what is the research problem or what are the research problems you are aiming to solve during your phd tenure in in that particular institution so obviously you have to write something which is aligned towards the research researchers or professors under whom you are looking for working as a phd phd candidate so it has to be related to your research interest and whichever professor name that you have given in the sop letter or in the in the application so it has to be aligned with them now writing a research proposal is really very difficult i mean if you don't have any any kind of research experience prior to applying applying for the phd then it is very difficult you know to write a research proposal and if you if you can't write a good research proposal then your you know chance of getting selected is also very less because these institutions they always look for candidates who has some kind of prior experience in research and a person who doesn't have a prior experience in research can't write a good research proposal so that's why you know if you are looking for applying uh, for phd in foreign universities you should do some kind of research research into your mtech now coming to how you will write this research proposal uh, so you know first of all you have to find out a problem statement that you are looking for, forward to solve in your phd tenure and you have to do a background study i mean literature survey uh, that you need to do where you will you will read a lot of papers related to that particular problem and then you will write that what are the what are the direction this problem has been already solved and what are the problem that is relate uh, that is you know remains there uh, which is yet to be solved uh, by any any researcher in the community so everything you have to write in this document that what is what what has been solved yet and what what has been already solved and what are the what are the scope is there uh, to be solved and this letter you know this this document will be at least two pages so you have to write in details everything and this will be an edge i mean if you can write a good research proposal then then this will obviously give you an edge because this professors i mean in foreign universities when many people are applying uh for 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 uh, for working under them they used to look for candidates who has a prior research experience and this research proposal uh, if you can write it very well and uh, then it will show that you have some prior experience of working as a researcher and then you know this will leave a very good impression into the reviewer's mind or into the professor's mind and they will obviously choose you for the phd candidate next is letter of recommendation or lor in short uh, so this you don't need to submit so you have to just give the name of the recommender 
I mean two three people who will recommend you their name and email address you have to give in the document and uh, give in the application and from the from the institution they will uh, send the mail or the format uh, to these people and they will write it and they will upload in the upload in the portal so most of the cases you won't be able to see what these people has written about it uh, but this is a really very crucial uh, thing in in case of PhD application in foreign or even in the India also sometimes in this IIT is also used to ask for letter of recommendation and you know these two three people they will be the professors either either will be professors uh, from your BTech or MTech uh, college most likely your guide I mean who, uh, who, uh, whoever will, uh, will be your guide uh, in your BTech or MTech days uh, most most likely your, their name only will be given in the doc, uh, in the application or maybe some researcher from the industry I mean suppose you have worked in industry for a couple of years under someone so you can give him or her name as a as a as a recommender now why i'm saying that this letter of recommendation is really very crucial because you know whether your guide or uh, or whichever researcher under whom you have worked uh, he or she is given you a good recommendation or not that plays a very crucial role uh, for your you know application getting selected or rejected and if your mtech or btech guide is really influential i mean if he's really a good researcher and he's well renowned uh, internationally like people know know about him or her uh, so then if he or she is giving you a good recommendation then your chance of getting selected is very high on the other hand if he or she is giving you a bad recommendation then your chance of getting rejected is very high so that's why you know whenever you'll be giving the name of a particular person for your recommender uh, recommend uh, recommender uh, then you know make sure that you have already talked with that person and you got a assurance from that person that he or she is willing to give you a recommendation and you must have a good rapport with those people i mean otherwise they won't give you a good recommendation and then your your application will be rejected so letter recommendation is one of the most crucial document that you need you don't need to prepare you have to just give the name of them and whether they are giving you a good recommendation or bad recommendation that plays a very vital role and final document is that you have to upload the test scores i mean whether you have appeared for gre or toefl uh, so that test score you have to upload in the in the in the portal and i'm not sure about it what i've heard that after your gre or uh, toefl exam uh, there is an option to send it to different institution i mean if you give the address of the institution they will send it to that corresponding institution so that i am not sure about it you can check uh, online uh, whoever is given gre or uh, toefl but yeah this this uh, score you need to submit because uh, in my time you know due to covid i didn't have to submit uh, gre and toefl score so that's why uh, i i don't have any idea about it but in general you have to submit the gre and toefl course score if you are applying for usa universities and you need to only submit a uh, toefl or ielit score uh, if you are if you are going for uh, Europe universities. Yeah, so these are six documents that you need to prepare, but there are two additional things that I will recommend you to prepare. So one is uh, one of the web page that you have to make for yourself, uh, and there you have to give again all the details like your educational details, your personal details, uh, what are the projects that you are part of, what are the research experience that you have, the publications and all that you have to prepare a web page. So you can you can prepare a web page in the GitHub or in the Google site that of your choice, and there are some other other ways is there so uh, you have to prepare one of your web pages and give the link of the web page in your cv and also you know make your linkedin uh, profile page uh, well maintained i mean uh, it, it you, you have to make a linkedin page that is updated so where whatever your academic details what are the projects that you've been part of what are the again everything you have to update in the linkedin linkedin page and that also you have to mention in the cv so that you know uh, you have to ready i mean the main idea is you have to be updated everywhere so whenever someone will review your document if he or she opens up your web page if he or she open up your cv or the linkedin page so they should have the overall idea about yourself so this there shouldn't be any gap anywhere so that every every everywhere you have to be very updated so that you know uh, your profile should be very strong for the phd application yeah so that's it about this video i have tried to explain about all the documents that you need to prepare if you are planning to apply for phd in, in foreign universities 
and i hope this will this will help you if someone is uh, you know applying for phd in, uh, phd in foreign universities in coming days so yeah that's it about this video i hope you like this video and if you have liked this video please like it and share this video to many other people and if you are new to this particular channel again i am saying please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get all the notifications regularly that's it about this video i'll be meeting in the next video until then bye